Good day, students. Today we are going to learn together the population. Sorry. So, under this ecology of population, it's a wide topic. So, we're going to start with ecological succession. Ecological succession, as it is, we need to first understand what ecology is. Ecology has to do with the study of living organism in relation with the environment. And when we talk about succession, we want to know how living organisms succeed the other one. Like we have a governor succeeding the other one, another president succeeding another president, or a prince succeeding a king. So here now we want to understand how a community will be succeeded by another one. So succession is a chain of, of events in which one community is gradually replaced by another in orderly series until a suitable or climax community is achieved. So it's, it is also a gradual process. And this gradual process is orderly. And sometimes you can even predict some changes that we, we occur. So we have maybe after a disturbance or initial um, formation of soil, we have a plant community feeling over that landscape. So that ecological succession can be divided into phases. One, we have the primary, the secondary, and the climax states. Those are the three major phases of ecological succession. And if we want to really focus on this ecological succession, we will talk more about the plants. Because plants are usually the first to colonize a bear land. They are the primary producers on which every other living organism depends on. So this diagram shows how a succession occurs, what a succession is, and how it occurs over a period of time. Like we see this is a bear rock where there is no life, no plants, no animal. And over time, we'll see that we begin to notice some plants, the leeches, the mosses. Okay, leeches are algae, um, association between algae and fungi. So you see them growing. And what they do is that they, they help in soil formation. So when they grow, other animal weeds begin to grow again. Then the perennial weeds and the grasses again grow. The straws come up and the pines also come up till so we have a thick forest. The broad leaves one uh, like the maple, they come over. So this is what happened, but this is over a long period of time. This is what happened when we talk about ecological succession. A gradual replacement of a plant community. You understand? So the primary succession has to do with like uh, we talk about primary school as the beginning, the basis. So primary education is the basis before you have a secondary. The same way the, um, the succession, primary succession is the basis. It's usually occur where there is no life. On the bare ground that there has never been any living thing or, um, on that land. So it's, 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 it's when an organism colonizes an area void, devoid of life. Maybe there's a natural um, event that occur that causes a barren land. So over time, that barren land will be replaced by vegetation gradually. So that is primary succession. And on that uh, primary succession, we have some organisms that will first take over that area of land. Those organisms are called pioneer organisms. They are called pioneers or colonizers. And these colonizers are examples of algae, the fungi, the leeches, the mosses. So they are the first one that we we'll see on a bare land. Okay, so over time, like I said, that um, the leeches, they are the first one, the pioneers. So they form a thin layer of soil. They are built up for other advanced plants to come up, like the fern, the grasses, to take their roots in those soil. So along with the successful colonization of plants, other animals will also come in, the insects, the birds, and other small invertebrates. They come in 
to that um, land because of the presence of the colonizers, the pioneers. So, and once we begin to have plants and animals, you know that the ecosystem is being well developed, the landscape will begin to accept more complex life until we reach a climax condition or what we call a general equilibrium. So this diagram shows a, a primary succession. There's a bare rock where the virgin land, uh, uh, there's no life here before. We can see the pioneer organisms, the leaching coming over. Then we have the small plants like the algae and mosses that I mentioned. So they are called pioneer species. Then the grasses, it's also included in the, don't forget that we can use the word pioneer or colonizers. So they are the first to occupy a, a bear land. So you see them, they ask us to give you examples of pioneer species, leeches, small um, annual plants, then grasses or perennial grasses. Then after these pioneer species, you have the intermediate species. They are grasses, the shrubs, and the shade intolerant plants. These plants, they do not like shade. They cannot tolerate shade. Example is the pine. Look at it. This, this is a pine. So you can see them growing tall. They don't want to be covered. So they, they, they prefer to be exposed to shade because they, they want uh, maximum um, sunlight. Then gradually, the community is established. This is a climax community where we have plants, the trees, the well, um, tall trees that form canopy. Those ones that are shade tolerant trees that can withstand shade, um, they, can, they can tolerate shade. So those ones are the ones that form the climax community. So the primary succession may begin from a dry rock. Uh, I've shown like the first example I showed you, a dry rock, which we eventually fill up with vegetation to become a marshland. You know what a marshland is? It's the first is transition between uh, aquatic and terrestrial environment. So it is a shallow land that is usually waterlogged, filled with grasses and some few plants. And eventually we become a forest. Or we have um, a shallow lake that is gradually filled with vegetation until it become a marshland and eventually it will grow into a forest, which we can call a climax community, okay? Or we can also have the mouth of a river where silt or mud are deposited, uh, forming a bank on which a mangrove swamp develops and eventually a tropical forest will be formed. So that is how a primary succession can be formed. This is an example of how a primary succession is formed. And this one shows a lake, a lake that is gradually filled up by plants. You can see that the soil is forming up and plants are growing in the lake. And over time, the water is reducing, the soil is increasing, the plants are growing taller. And with time, the plants almost display all the water. This is a marshland. We have different plants here now, and we can see this is um, well a terrestrial environment. This is well formed until a climate condition is reached. So this is that is how it is gradually being filled up with vegetation. So here we can see that we have animals. Even though when we talk about succession, we will talk mainly on the plants. Even though with the time, with time. Animals will also come in. So we can see that we have a full um, thick forest in the gradual end. So now let's talk about the secondary succession. Secondary succession, like uh, unlike the first one, which is the primary, is like the next stage is more, it's, it's, it's um, more complex as we have the secondary education. The primary education is simple. The secondary education is the gradual. Most times it occurs, most of the ecological changes we have, they are basically secondary succession. Because this does not have to take place on a bare land. So most biological communities are in a continuous state of secondary succession. 
So it, it is described as when um, uh, est already established community is being replaced by a different set of plants and animals. So secondary succession is usually gradual and always moving towards the climax. So when we have already established um, community, maybe that, has, that, 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 that was exposed to fire, we have fire outbreak, or that was abandoned, abandoned farmland, or that has been um, exposed to flooding. You understand? So, and we have the plant community or animal community being displaced. Over time, those things can be gradually restored. That is uh, secondary succession. So this is uh, uh, this diagram represents a typical example of secondary succession. We can see there's a fire outbreak here, destroying the vegetation, destroying the tree. And with time, those things need to be restored. We can see now that unlike the primary succession where we have the pioneer to be leeches and all that, soil have already been formed here. So we have the annual plants. We have the grasses and the perennial grasses. Then we have the intermediate species here. Then we have the climax community. You can see the number of years it will take for a climax community to be formed. So it's a gradual process and it takes a lot of time. So this also shows um, a secondary succession. This is um, this land has been exposed to wildfire and over time it's been restored. So the restore the gradual restoration of plant community uh, is what we call succession. And when we have a, a community being established already but was destroyed, maybe abandoned farmland or overgrazed land or exposed to flooding or fire outbreak, then it's the plant community has to be restored. We call this type a secondary succession. So climate community, like I've been using climate community, is when a barren land has been sufficiently occupied. You know, we begin with a barren land, a virgin land where there's no vegetation. And over time, it has been sufficiently occupied and prepared by pioneer species. Uh, and we have a lot of intermediate species and different types of plants and animals. Then we say that it has reached a climax community. So organisms within a climax community are filled most of, it, most not of the biological niches. So most of them, um, we say that they have reached a general equilibrium so it can also the stability of a um, climate community varies widely um, especially when the landscape consists of high mountain and low valley so in such cases the final biological matrix of plant and animal can cover vast tract of land or to be limited to a very small pocket within the la landscape so these are the factors that can affect the stability of climate com uh, community. It can also change with the rainfall. These are major abiotic factor, rainfall, soil type, altitude, and temperature. So this, as this varies, it will also affect the equilibrium of the climate community. So how do these organisms that are colonizing, that are taking over the new um, um, landscape, how are they able to survive or how should they how would they be able to survive in the new habitat? So one, a colonizing species must evolve a better adaptation for survival. We know that adaptation is key for survival. So they must have adaptive futures. They must also use the food that is available. They must use some um, source of food in the new habitat for survival. They also need to have a wide tolerance range for the abiotic factor that we've mentioned like um, temperature, uh, rainfall, altitude, they must have wide range of tolerance. Well, those things changes with time so that they'll be able to sustain themselves in the new habitat. Then the colonizer also have to summon competition. You know that competitions could be between um, the same species, could be between different species. So when a colonizer is coming to take over a particular place, they also prepare themselves to surmount any competition they have ahead of them. So, so far we've talked about succession as a gradual event, series of events that takes place over time in which community is being um, replaced 
uh, plant vegetation is being replaced. So we're also talking about the major types of um, um, succession as primary, secondary, and climax community. We said primary is when it's starting from a bare land, and um, secondary is when we have the land being destroyed and vegetation has to be restored. Then climax, we said it's, it's, uh, it's a stable environment which can um, be altered based on some basic ecological factor. So I want you to answer these questions, um, which will uh, help your understanding on the topic. Thank you for listening.